What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today we're going full wizard reviewing Hogwarts Legacy. Do we finally have a Harry Potter game that doesn't suck? Does Hogwarts Legacy meet the standard of most open world games? And is it worth buying? I give the good, the bad, the ugly, and answer these questions in my final verdict. Ever since Hogwarts Legacy was announced back in 2020, there have been a lot of mixed reviews about how they feel about it. There are those that love Harry Potter and are just afraid that the game just gonna straight up suck. There are those trying to call each person who plays the game a transphobe, trying to stop or block the game from being played by anybody. Then there's everyone else that's just unsure whether the game will actually land and just wanna have a fun game to play. Me personally, I'm a fan of Harry Potter, but I was even nervous about whether this game would just flop right out the gate. I mean, there were several issues that when you look at the trailers back when they were first shown, that they had a lot of problems with their development and it looked a little clunky to me. But then when I started seeing a lot of the more recent trailers about the game and what you do with the entire IP, I actually started to feel a lot less scared and was more excited to see what was gonna happen when this game released. And when it did, it had one of the biggest launches and we've seen in recent history, and it was one of the most streamed games on Twitch, breaking multiple records in the millions of people that were watching the game. But the ultimate question is, should you buy Hogwarts Legacy? And that's why your boy here is gonna help you answer that question. So let's start off with the good. Overall, the gameplay of Hogwarts Legacy is pretty good. At first glance, the trailers made the entire combat seem very clunky, but at the end of the day, once you get in there, it's actually a lot of fun and a lot more fluid than I actually thought. When you think of Harry Potter, you always think of spell casting and dishing out punishment to your foes in multiple ways. Hogwarts Legacy has a total of 35 different spells that can be used in the game and each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Spells like the basic cast and Protego are built into the base mechanics, which are used on a daily basis and are essential to combat. But once you start learning the advanced magic, that's where the fun really begins. Each spell is organized into its different categories and they each have their own use. Some are more for utility, like for fixing pathways, using Reparo, or lighting dark alleys by using Lumos. Others are for controlling enemies or objects, which help in combat and story missions. Levioso, which levitates enemies, can be used in combat scenarios, which can devastate guards. Then you have the more combat spells that can cause massive damage, like Incendio, which blasts your enemies with fire. You can even learn the unforgivable curses, which were from the books and the games, and they are straight up badass. Using Avada Kedavra makes you feel like the biggest chat on the planet. The Dark Lord. Me. The combination of all these spells makes the combat situations feel so fun to engage in. Once you get into a fight with multiple enemies, you can really see how fluent the combat really is. Using specific spells to weaken enemies and then create a combination attack really makes this game feel super diverse and you just start really having fun with it. The very overlooked system in this game is the skill tree. I honestly was extremely surprised with the many different types of things that you can unlock and adapt in this game. These skills can vary between small changes like granting you minor boosts in ancient magic per parry, all the way to having basically entire pool of fire being used every time you use the spell Incendio. Overall, the gameplay excels in the many ways in which I hope this game would be. I was completely surprised at how addicting the game really is, because if you look back at the trailers, it looked rough to say the least. But honestly, the game is so fluid the way you play it, and it's just straight up fun. When looking at Hogwarts Legacy and the story and plot of the game, I had super high expectations because you're attached to the IP of Harry Potter. This game takes place way before the story of Harry Potter, so this kind of gives the devs a wide open canvas of what they can do with this game. And overall, I thought they did a great job here. The basic story of the game is that you are a fifth year student being transferred to Hogwarts. After making you create an extremely British sounding character, which oddly mine looks like the werewolf kid from Twilight, you're on your way to start learning to be a wizard at Hogwarts. Wow, I can't believe I'm going to be a wizard. I really hope nothing bad. Oh my Jesus. In very Harry Potter fashion, after you think you're going to have a normal year of learning charms and drinking butterbeer, you're thrown into an entirely too new plot where you find out there's a bunch of dark forces out there trying to cause mayhem into the entire wizarding world. You escape from the dragon by using a port key and you discover mysterious forms of ancient magic that only you as the protagonist can see. You find out there's a lot of these major antagonists like Ranrock, who is the vicious leader of the Goblin Rebellion, and Victor Rookwood, who leads a gang of dark wizards that made an alliance with the goblins. Throughout the story, you and your mentor, Elzar Fig, investigate the source of the ancient magic in Hogwarts and try to figure out a way to keep it out of the hands of the villain. I think, honestly, this connection between you and Elzar Fig 
is mirroring that of Harry and Dumbledore. Granted, it's not to the same level, but it's actually not that bad. This sounds like a pretty standard Harry Potter story, but really the best part of it has to do with the details. The characters are exactly the way I would picture them from the books and movies. Now, granted, they don't match the legendary trio from the original story, but they are serviceable and they feel like they would match in this world entirely. You're building friendships and rivalries throughout the entire game. I feel like the point of any Hogwarts game is to try to recapture the magic of the original stories, and I thought they did a pretty good job here. I think if we're going to make a game about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter that was separate from the original story, I think this is just as good as how you would do it. I think one of the best parts of this game is the map design. I felt really impressed when exploring the map because I really didn't expect to see this many things available at the start of the game. The map is massive in scale, really giving the player many locations to visit along their journey throughout the game. The best part of the game has to be the fact that many parts of the map are identical to the movies and the books. It really shows the level of dedication that the devs show when making this map because of how detailed it really was. And you can see this directly with the different dorms you can pick of the houses. Being able to pick your house does have impact on the game, but the biggest thing is that the different types of missions you have, as well as the interactions you face throughout the entire journey. Each house has its own living spaces and is extremely detailed based on the book. Your boy picked Slytherin because I have to represent my boy Snape. The Slytherin house seems very ancient and has a deep lore to it. Gryffindor has that classic feel from the movies, houses Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff, both unique in its design and were very interesting to see them for the first time. Overworld games usually have a very difficult time of really filling the map and making it feel as if it's whole, but I really think that Hogwarts Legacy did a great job with how they designed their map for the player. Along with the many different things you can see across the map, they have a lot of different side quests and missions that you can accomplish so it doesn't feel like you're just going from point A to point B. Having the ability to explore dungeons, to free bandit bases, and to find treasure, as well as ancient shrines. I personally feel like the worst aspects of world games is the lifeless atmosphere itself, but this game does a good job with its map design. I feel as if they deserve a lot of credit here. Hogwarts Legacy aced one of the most important aspects of a Harry Potter IP, making the world feel like it's an extension of the already rich lore. I mean, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, then the map will make you extremely happy how well the Wizarding World was recaptured in this title. There are so many things that you can do and find in this game that you can play hours and just only scratch the surface. Now, granted, it may not compare to a lot of these op other open world games out there, but it does a very good job at organizing its map and giving you a lot of different things you can do. One of the biggest issues I have about this game, though, is that there is no such thing as a multiplayer component in this game. It's not like that every open world game needs to have a multiplayer. But it feels as if, if you have one, it only makes the game better. Hogwarts Legacy feels as if they waste a very good opportunity to include a multiplayer component of this game, and I just am just disappointed that they didn't have one. I think if they had made the game like Destiny or Halo Infinite, where you can complete missions together and still have your own progression, then this game would literally be amazing. One of the key themes from the original books is the strength of family and friends. Imagine you can build your own crew with your with your pals online and be able to dominate the wizarding world. Like, do you think that we can't combat these dark wizards? We would lay it the smack it down on all their candy asses. It's a feature that I think would elevate this game to high levels with some cooperative experiences. If you look at recent trends in gaming, especially with open worlds, you'll see that most of the time, these open world games, even if the gameplay is good and fun, if you have an experience that includes multiplayer, it only makes it better. You get to make your own stories as well as live out the current story of the game. Possibly one of the issues, I guess, with having a multiplayer component in this game would be the fact that the easiness of the overall experience would probably cause a problem. I mean, honestly, single player wise, you can kind of dominate if you know how to use different combinations well. And I can only imagine if you have a multiplayer component to it, it would only just dampen that feeling. The only way that it would actually work is if you would increase the difficulty to at least match the level of players you have included with you. Alone, I'm a one man army, but together we can take down the entire wizarding world. One of the other things I had an issue with was the variety of side quests. I mentioned earlier in the video that I was happy with the different types of things that you can do in this game, and that is true. However, the problem I do notice is that side quests are more like missions for doing busy work. I could be learning new spells and straight up fighting a goblin terrorist and then go talk to a classmate and they're like, hey, can you find me some missing pages that are floating on the fourth floor of Hogwarts? Bruh. Like, dude, I'm literally fighting straight up dark wizard terrorists and you're asking me to go get you a go search mission for your missing homework? At least give me some missions that can max my level of power here. I don't think Harry Potter was sitting out there worrying to go find one of their classmates a 
piece of relief that they can go show their their friends that they aren't afraid of plants and yeah literally i'm actually talking about a real mission here i believe the best open world games make you feel like everything you do always has a purpose you aren't just wandering around the landscape doing nothing looking at the best open world games they always put effort in not only the main storyline but also the side quests as well for example look at the witcher 3 wild hunt every side mission literally has its own lore its own storyline and only advances the different characters you meet along the way and every time you make a choice in that game it always impacts the grander story overall some choices can be satisfying most choices are straight up brutal it gives you some sort of sense of closure when completing them in some cases even these missions can have impact on the main storyline if you complete them the right way sure in hogwarts legacy you can make a choice at the end of a mission you can either be a complete douche or you can be a complete simp it really doesn't matter at the end of the day because it doesn't impact your main storyline or really have impact on you as a character. The point of side quest is to create a context to certain characters or aspects of the world. Why not have a cast of characters that you develop a relationship with so that you do some sort of like a Mass Effect style of game where you can either build your bonds or you can eventually break or strengthen them depending on with what happens in the game. Imagine having a story where you have your own little band of friends that you have to build relationships with them along the way and eventually you either have to side with certain groups of people or break bonds with others. And that could be developed all through the side quests. That is a high level of immersion if you do it the right way. And at times, this game does have issues graphically. For a game that looks great overall, there were constant bugs that did happen throughout my entire experience. There are two modes to play in this game, one being performance mode, which emphasizes keeping the game at a good FPS, while quality focuses on the fidelity of the game to keep it at its peak. I was playing personally on performance mode just because I didn't want to see any dips in the FPS while I was playing so they could stay right around that 60 range throughout my entire experience. But even playing in performance, I did notice a lot of issues while I was just going through the different parts of Hogwarts. Now this wasn't to a major level that hindered the way I played, but it was sometimes a little too noticeable that I couldn't just like skip right past it. Like for some reason, either Professor Fig was practicing some sort of dark magic but his face literally had issues controlling textures, making it look like he was growing shadows all over his cheeks. Like, uh, Professor, you, you got a little something here. Oh, well, it's it's all over your face. Or times where objects like robes would just magically go through a character's body. Like, one time I was walking by a classmate, and he literally looked like he was pitching a tent when I walked to go talk to him. Like, uh... Dude, you might want to like put that away. These bugs aren't really breaking the game, but it's hard to kind of just like look right past them because of the fact that you're playing this experience and you're just trying to enjoy the atmosphere. It didn't break my fun, but it kind of hampered it a little bit. Now, one of the biggest issues I have with this game is the fact that there is a missing piece that would make this Harry Potter game full, and that is the lack of Quidditch. Ah, yes, Quidditch, the, the legendary game that makes boys into men, amateurs into legends. One of the most synonymous games with Harry Potter is Quidditch, which basically is a wizard version of soccer that engulfs the story. I mean, it's so popular that people in reality have their own Quidditch leagues and compete against each other. Now, one of the first things when I first heard that Hogwarts Legacy was going to be announced and released, I thought there was little to no chance that Quidditch would be left out. But I was utterly shocked, like the rest of the kids in Hogwarts, when the Headmaster Black told entire school Quidditch is canceled. What? Why? Why? I honestly wanted to start a riot with the rest of the kids in the building when I heard about that. I'm actually confused in how this is even possible. I mean, you have broomstick flying lessons, side missions using your broomstick. There's literally a field that is actually able to explore on, but no Quidditch. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? This is such a meatball of a choice to make that you have the ability to Im embed this game, a mini game, into the story and everyone would just be all over it and the worst part is it seems like there's no plans to add this into the game later on this just seems like a wasted opportunity i wanted to be the quidditch champion of the world but i guess i won't be able to experience that in hogwarts legacy overall i think this game did better than what i expected coming across a good harry potter ip is like seeing ea actually give you a game that's worth 70 dollars very rare to find but once you do it's honestly a breath of fresh air harry potter games have been utterly trashed since the ps2 era and it's honestly good to see that they finally have something they can put on the shelf that we actually have a game that's fun. The gameplay and map are very impressive, especially because my expectations were super low and they surprised me with how well they polished this game 
for its release. The story was very serviceable and gave off similar vibes to the movies. Sure, at, at times the side quests seemed like busy work and graphically the game had some bugs and the lack of a multiplayer and Quidditch modes really did hurt my soul. But at the end of the day, I had a great time. I'm giving Hogwarts Legacy an 8.6 out of 10. They had all the right spots on this open world game and they finally showed up all the critics, including myself, that the Harry Potter IP can have a banger of a hit. I was one of those people that said that this game was going to flop upon its release, but I can honestly say I was completely wrong. The devs over at Avalanche gave me a super kick right in the groin upon hearing my thoughts. This game is a must buy if you are a fan of Harry Potter or want to experience a good open world game. Unfortunately at the moment, there seems to be no DLC or expansion in the works over at Avalanche, but hopefully with the success of this game, we can finally see something added to this title and I'm really looking forward to see what that is thank you everyone for watching what do you think about hogwarts legacy let me know what you think in the comments below if you like this type of content consider subscribing to support the channel and to get notified when we post more dope content join our twitch where we stream at least three days a week and that is located in the description below you can also find us on all of our socials also located in the description below until next time this is marsman from marsman gaming signing off peace out guys <laughs>